Matt Miguez has plenty on his mind, and he's ready to share it with the world. It's time to hear the Miguez Mindset. Welcome into the Miguez Mindset here on ESPN 1037 Lafayette and 1041 Lake Charles YouTube channel. Matt Miguez here talking about the Houston Astros as we are just a little over two weeks away from the start of the season. Uh, plenty to talk about in terms of spring training, injury news as well. Uh, the host of the Locked On Astros podcast, you know him as H-Town Wheelhouse. We know him as Mr. Brett Chanty. Brett, good morning, man. Thanks for taking the time. How are you? Yeah, man, doing good. Um, you know, it seems like every day we get closer. Um, for the most part, I think we are liking what we're hearing out of camp, out of the players that we know that will be on the field for opening day. So I think we've got a lot of players, even though they're veterans, have a lot to prove this year. They've got a lot motivating them. And I think we're going to have a really fun 2024 season. You know, I want to start with the the spring training record because I feel like any time – uh, I don't want to use the term casual fan, but ki- kind of a casual fan. Um, when, when they see that the Astros are nine and eight in spring training, they're going to be like, oh my God, the Astros might not be very good this year. But at the same time, the Astros are consistently, you know, moving guys in and out of the lineup, trying new things. So you, you can't look too far into the spring training record, right? Yeah, exactly. And, I think one of the one of the things you focus on it well one of the things you don't focus on for your offense is you don't necessarily focus on average but how are your guys hitting the ball um because I, I can tell you I've watched you know four or five games and there's probably six or seven home runs that probably get out of the ballpark if you're not at West Palm Beach facility if you're if you're in a regular ballpark where there's not all the wind and so you have that but you know like Jake Myers the other day was just just punishing the ball. And so was Altuve and Bregman in the same game, but they were all being caught. So that's not really what you're looking for. But what you're looking for is can they get things going? And I, you know, I like um I like what they're doing. They're 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 scoring early. Um Altuve's already been featured on MLB network talking about how he loves having the protection of Jordan behind him. He's probably I think going to be the happiest leadoff that he's ever had because who wouldn't want to hit with you on hitting behind you because you've got protection now. But it's not about record. It's about how the guys are coming along. It's about how your pitchers are progressing. And if, you're, if your offensive players are really getting a good feel and are your guys on defense, are do they have chemistry out there? You know, you'd have – Chaz did play one game, I know for sure, in center field made an amazing catch. But when they're out there in the outfield, how are they doing? What are they doing? when they get a ball hit to them, different situations. And it's all about situational baseball. So record is never a thing. I mean, people have gone, you know, 12 and 0 or 13 and 1 or in spring training, and they could be the Pirates. No offense to the Pirates, but yeah, we could care less about record. What we care about is progress, see that the guys are ready. And they may not be in midseason form, but we like to hear that phrase. Man, they look like they're in midseason form on opening day. Right. No doubt about it. And, you know, uh, one thing I wanted to get to with you as well is, you know, from what you've been hearing and, and maybe what you've even been seeing, who's really stood out at uh, at, at spring training besides, you know, the names you come to expect, your Jordans and your Bregmans? Well, you know, I think I think Jake Myers is actually come out, you know, firing. He, he's he's got something to prove. He's been labeled the starting center fielder. And I think because everything I know of Jake Myers and from interviewing him when he was a Sugarland Skeeter before they were the Space Cowboys and before his first call up or his his call up, you know, Jake Myers, I was really impressed with his mindset. And you're really starting to see that he has the confidence of his coaching staff in the club. And I, I think he's gonna have a really good season. So I think I'm I'm looking at him. Look, I know, I know um Arigetti got sent to minor league camp, but he showed really well. Um, you have um, Parker Mashinsky, um, left-hander, um, hasn't allowed a run this spring. And and he is, if if he makes this roster, if he makes the bullpen, 
he'll be one of two left-handers. Hater's that other left-hander. And so I like what I'm seeing out of them. And I love the young guys. I love the low profitos. Um, but I I just like where Jeremy Pena is, too. He seems to be hitting better. He seems to be getting more lift. Um, and um, it's and it's good to see Carantini get in there and work. Um, and I think Yanner Diaz has done phenomenal so far this spring. But for me, Myers, um, Mashinsky, you know, those are guys you don't really that don't get the headlines, especially Mashinsky, great kid out of Texas Tech. But I think we've got a bullpen that is really gonna surprise people because people keep saying, well, we need more bullpen arms. And you can never have too many, but those are the guys that I'm really liking right now. You know, talking about pitching in the bullpen, in the age of modern technology here in 2024, everybody's been raving about the pitch com. But apparently, Fran Valdez is not a fan. Um, to the point where Joe Espada said yesterday that Framber's not going to wear a pitch com in 2024. They're going to stick to the original way of of, of giving him signs um, for, for his pitches. What, what, in your opinion, what do you think is the reason why he's not comfortable with it? Well, I, I just I just don't know. See, with Framber, it's between the ears. That is his biggest Achilles heel. It is has nothing to do with talent. The guy is a drive and a talent, but when it comes to the mental aspect of the game, that has been his biggest challenge. And we know... If if you know anything about baseball, I mean, you you could have maybe only watched a season of baseball to tell that is one of the most. It is the sport that beats you down the most. I mean, you're in a sport that if you hit the ball thirty percent of the time, you're a Hall of Famer. What job can you go to and do thirty percent of your job correctly and right. be rewarded for it? Right. Yep. So you're right. I I just think what they're trying to do is they're trying to find what works best for Fromber. And if Fromber's comfortable with it, if the if the if his battery mate and in, in Yanner Diaz is comfortable with it, I say let the dude go the way he wants to go. And yeah, you may have signs, you may have different things going on, but he's he's gonna have to find his way. You know, Fromber is looking at a big contract extension with the Astros or heading into free agency soon. So he wants to prove his viability, not only to the Astros, but to the league. And now he gets the opportunity to be the opening day starter again, which he was last year because we did have JV to start the year. So we'll just have to see how this goes. I think the Astros are real good at making adjustments. And if for some reason they need to pull the plug on that, they'll do it. But they're going to do what they think gets their quote unquote ace right now in the right mindset. All right. You're Joe Espada. Who is your opening week rotation? Opening week rotation. Well, I, I'm going to go with, because we're just going to assume that Justin Verlander is not, is just not available for the first two weeks. Okay. Um, so, so we're going to leave him off the opening day rotation just because I think he starts maybe week two or three. Um, I'm going to go with Farmer Valdez, obviously leading off. Um, I'm going to bring in, Christian Javier, um, number two. My number three guy, um, gosh, see, because you've got, you've got, hot, you've got, see, JP France hasn't really thrown. Um, three, four, and five. You know, Hunter Brown's been throwing the ball really well. Yeah. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go Hunter Brown. I'm going to go Jose or Keaty. And then, so we've got Valdez, Javier, Brown, or Keaty. And then if France is ready and available, France. Be France. Yeah. So you, you know, hesitating and, and trying to, to play that out kind of answers my question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If Justin Verlander is not available for the first couple weeks of the season should the Astros look to make a move for an arm or is it just uh hey we'll get through the first two weeks and figure it out 
I really think they are going to, I think they're going to wait it out. Um, I think because it is two weeks, I, I don't see that it is anything that's alarming to a, you know, something that's too worrisome beyond those two weeks. Now, I think if it was a more severe thing you do, because the problem is even if you go out and get a Snell or a Montgomery or someone like that on a one-year deal, you're going to have to expense a lot on a one-year deal. And then you're going to have to scramble because now the league's looking at reducing how many pitchers can be on the roster and all this stuff. So then you have some of your key guys that you're going to depend on. So I think they stand pat. I would stand pat unless it was an injury where he was out two, three months, then you start going, okay, who can we bring in? Um, but do you go big or go home type of me mentality? And that's, that, that's a question the Astros would have to answer. How close do you feel a, a guy like Spencer Aragetti who had some strong showings in spring training has now been sent to minor league camp. How close do you feel he is to, to being in a major league bullpen? You know, I think he could be ready sooner than Hunter Brown was when he came up in 2022. You know, Hunter Brown was supposed to come up a little bit earlier than he did, but he kept struggling with his command. As long as Spencer Arrighetti can fill the strike zone, can get his two-seam, four-seam working, and then can bring in his secondary pitches to get that swing and miss, and he can do that in his first maybe three or four starts down there in, in Sugar Land, you know, I'm all for playing the long game with these pitchers. And Spencer Arrighetti's young enough to where you don't have to rush him Correct. to the majors. Um, in April, they're going to be playing a lot of games. They're going to really rely on that six-man rotation. By the time you get to May, you may have some guys that are gassed early. And so Spencer Arrighetti coming up and getting spot starts. Um, let's say they have Belak on this roster and on, and on the big leagues. Um you know, he may not be working out. And then if you've got to DFA him because he's out of options, then you can bring up Arrighetti in his right. place. You could see him mid-season. I wouldn't be opposed to him coming up towards the end of the season, but I think Arrighetti could be ready sooner than a late-season call-up. Now, well, let's get to the, the big Houston Astros question, and that is, of course, your third baseman, Alex Bregman. Um, obviously, there's some some contract issues there. Um, in, in your opinion, how close are they to making a deal? And is Alex Bregman in a Houston Astros uniform in 2025? You know, I go back on this. I mean, I go back on this almost every week. I go back and forth because when I feel like, okay, this seems like a scenario where Alex Bregman is going to resign. Then I think, no, I don't know, man. I just, I, 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 what has to happen is the Astros offer has got to be decent enough for Bregman to feel like he's not leaving too much on the table to stay in an Astros uniform. Because I think Bregman's heart, he wants to be an Astro. He wants to play alongside Altuve. He wants to have that career. And, you know, Players like staying put. Now, Bregman did did move his main residency out to Arizona, you know, and that put some pause and some worry into people's hearts about, wait, why did he move from Houston to Arizona? And so Alex Bregman, I think, is going to go out and have an absolute great year. I think he's going to win his first gold glove because Matt Chapman is now out of the AL. Yep. He's won four of the four of the seven that you know, Bregman's had a chance to win. And so if the Astros can make him a sizable enough contract and still be able to pay Kyle Tucker, I think Alex Bregman stays. And But if Alex, go ahead. Do, do you think that that's possible? See, I don't know. I didn't think signing a relief pitcher for $95 million for five years was possible. And, and so I think, I think Crane I think Crane could surprise us, but in all reality, if it looks like he's going to get a massive contract after this year, more than likely he's not going to be in an Astros uniform. Um, and I know a lot of fans don't like to hear that, but Alex Bregman has given his all to this city for all seven years, going into his eighth year of his major league career. Never compromised, even through injuries. 
Um, he heard some hate. He heard he heard the naysayers the year he was having the soft tissue injury issues. But I think Alex Bregman belongs in an Astros uniform. I would like to see him here. I just don't know if financially the Astros can commit to them what Alex Bregman wants ultimately in the end. Brett Chancy, host of the Locked On Astros, joining us here on the Miguel's Mindset. Brett, tell the folks what you have going on over on Locked On Astros. Yeah, man, we've got some cool things going on. Um, we will be doing some live shows. We're actually working on getting a live show with Luke Berryhill, Astros AAA catcher, who's oh. also a country music singer. Um, we're going to be doing a live event. Um, so time and place to be determined, but that will be a fun time. And we're just looking at um, hopefully getting more players on. We'll be featuring some guys like Lo Perfido and, um, and you know, Spencer Arigetti early on in the minor league season will be going there live constellation field. So check us out, man. Just we'll have extra content. Mike Stanton will be coming on more often from space city home network. And so we just look for the best year yet in 2024. And you guys are the real MVP. So just make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well at ESPN Southwest Louisiana. Also make sure to follow us on social at ESPN underscore SWLA. This has been the Miguel's Mindset with Brett Chancy on ESPN 1037 Lafayette and 1041. Charles.